Hey guys, it's Megan Ritz with Classic Cakes, back for Tutorial Tuesdays. I hope you guys are excited. I have missed you and I am very excited to get to show you guys some tie-dye techniques with buttercream today. So let me pull this up on here so I have your questions. Remember, ask questions um, and I will answer them when I see them. I will go back if I miss any comments. I will definitely answer them after, after the live. Um, it is easy for me to miss them when I'm um, playing and doing all this stuff. So, um, welcome to Tutorial Tuesdays. If you are new, say hi. If you are returning, say hi. I love it. I love seeing the comments popping up. Terry Towner, so happy to have you. Um, I'm really excited to be back and to be sharing some fun techniques and little tidbits that we have um, collected over the last long time. <laughs> um, so some housekeeping stuff. We are booking up for orders like crazy. We are hiring. We are training new people. Hey, Cindy, thanks for joining us. Um, so as we book up, and that means it, if you have an order that you need, if you have a date in mind for your cake, let us know in advance. Super easy. You can email cake at classiccakescarmel.com and we will get your order reserved for you. For a party cake, all we need is your name and the date that you need it, and we can hold the spot for you. Um, and then we just have to finalize things a week in advance. So get your orders in a year in advance, three weeks in advance, two weeks in advance, um, and we'll make sure that we don't run out of room for your order. Um, if we do book up without your order, or if it's super last minute and you realize that you need a cake because someone's coming over, then you can stop in anytime we're open and take a look at our case. We have a walk-in case of already decorated cakes ready for you guys, and we can always write on those um, to personalize it for you. So we have options. <laughs> um, like I said, we are hiring. We're looking for customer service people and we are looking for experienced cake decorators. So if you or anyone you know fits that, um, let them know and reach out to us and we will um, set up an interview time. So not fun, but I want to take a brief moment um, just to share with you a little bit about what we're doing for our reopening. We are staggering our reopening of our lobby. Um, we are taking orders just like we have this whole time. We are asking you if you pick up a cake to um, stay in the car and call us or ring the bell up front of our shop and we will bring the cake out to you. We're just such a small space and so we're trying to figure out how we can maximize um, the space and follow the social distancing guidelines of six feet and it's just really challenging in such a small area So we're asking that the only people who walk into the shop are either picking out a case cake Which is one of our walking cakes which are available Saturday mornings anytime from 9 to noon um, and Those who have appointments so if you're walking in to pick out a cake or if you have an appointment for a cake tasting um, then you are welcome to come into the shop. Otherwise, we're asking that you place all orders through phone or email. Again, we're trying to make this as simple as we can um, and just keep everybody, including our staff and customers, as safe as possible. So thank you so much for your patience. It does take us a lot longer to do everything with all of the new guidelines and procedures, um, but we are working very hard to make sure that everybody's taken care of and everybody gets that amazing cake. So not fun stuff out of the way. Let's talk fun stuff. So. I'm super excited to show you guys this new technique. I shouldn't say new. New for Tutorial Tuesdays. Um, classic cakes. Let me move this. I have to block so I can't see my face over here. Oh, they changed it. Now I have to look at my face. Um, so, yes. Um, Tie-dye. I have some different colors for us today because I was going to do like traditional tie-dye primary colors and um, I thought it'd be fun to play with some different colors. What you really want to think about before doing tie-dye is how your colors are going to blend together because where those colors meet you're going to have a little blending of color and so if you have like blue and orange and they meet you get this really like duty color and so that's not very appetizing, that's not very fun to see on the cake. So think about what colors um, are meeting and what they're gonna mix and then place your colors in that order. So tools, parchment bags. I love parchment bags. Um, hey Laura, good to see you here. Hey Paige, hey Emily. Um, I love the parchment bags because I don't have to wash them. So super easy to make. Um, you can buy them in triangles. 
You don't want to get waxy parchment. You want to actually look for parchment triangles um, so that they, the tape actually sticks to them. And we have a few videos showing how we fold those. So I'm not going to do that again. I got a sanitary rag here. Let me bring it out so it's ready to go. You will use this a lot to keep your hands clean, to keep your space clean, um, whether you're at home or in a professional kitchen. Pointy spatula, nice beautiful point at the end here. We will use this a lot for this technique. Excellent tool. Um, same with just any old credit card, license, gift card, something plastic. Stick it in the dishwasher, make sure it's sanitary, and it makes for an excellent tool to um, smooth things and get in the little corners and little bits. Scissors, we love scissors. I have my cake, oh my turntable is my favorite tool. I can't do anything without a turntable. So we have a beautiful turntable, thanks to Miss B's. And I have a cake that I've just really roughly, very, very thinly iced, and I got it cold. Um, so you'll wanna start there. I have one cake that I've already done in the freezer um, because this is like a two-stage decoration. So what we'll do is we'll put the icing, the colors on here, and then we'll pop it in the freezer and then let it get really hard. And then we'll do the final smooth so that they blend together nicely and not too much. Um, so I have one already in the freezer so I can just run and grab it and then show you guys that without having to wait for like 15 minutes. So colors, I have this really pretty purple and this pretty pink. We're gonna put these in bags I've got very little left of this because I used on the other cake. This pretty green. I love greens. What's your guys' favorite colors? I love asking this question. I'm very much affected by colors. Like, I feel very strongly about colors. I've got these cool colors too. So we're going to do all of these guys um, and just kind of play with it on the cake and see how it turns out. So every color needs a bag with some parchment or needs to be put in a parchment bag. So I'm just gonna scoop and I'm gonna move this so you can see what I'm doing. Hey Matt, thanks for joining us. So I'm just gonna scoop and fill and I just use my hand that's holding the bag to push on to scrape off the spatula. And we can wanna fill them to about here. You don't wanna fill them all the way to the top or when you try to close it, it'll squirt out the top. And then we're gonna fold them over and roll them up. Blue, aqua, what other colors do you guys love? I love greens. I love blue, I, I mean, I really like all colors, but I love greens. I've been liking purple a lot lately too. We've seen some very cool wedding cakes um, with like really, really saturated purples and blues lately and I love it. So we're just gonna fill our bags. So, blue, aqua, yellow and orange, purple. I love it. So, I um, move around. I'm sure you guys, if you're watching us often, then I'm sure you are used to the different backgrounds every time I do a video. I like to pick different corners of the shop. So, um, today, yeah, thank you, yeah. That was a customer, sorry guys. <laughs> so um, today we are in the lobby because we're closed. So I thought we could get away with the big windows and the sunlight, but um, people are always sneaking by trying to get in. So we are in the back corner of our bridal showroom. We've got our pretty shelves over here with our display cakes. I think it's fun to show you guys the different areas and we have a lot of corners in this bakery so I don't have much green left I used a lot of it so we will make that work purple red pink I love it um, okay so this is a super easy technique um, it's an awesome technique for kids or people who are learning because it's it really it really is simple and um, it's rewarding to do. So some designs are more challenging, some are simple but don't give you a whole lot of bang for your buck. So it's time consuming, so it's expensive if you like order a cake, 
but um, it's not challenging to do. So I'm just going to snip the top of these. And I want to make the holes on these kind of big to make it easier for me to squeeze so that I can do this a little bit faster. You can do it thin, but um, it will actually make the job a little bit harder for you and make it take longer. So I might actually cut these bigger, we'll see. Okay. Hi from New Zealand, that's awesome. People need cake at all hours, yes they do. And normally I would totally help him, but I couldn't leave you guys to help him, so. Um, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna see if I get a good angle over here. I have my cake, it's base iced, just really thin, nothing special. Um, you just wanna make sure that it's the shape that you want it, so your sides can't be wonky, you want them to be straight, clean, but they don't have to be beautiful or anything like that. Um, so all we're going to do is we're going to make a circle. Sure. Really any shape. You can start with any color. You want to think about what your next color is going to be, but it doesn't have to be in the same order. It doesn't have to be, um, any particular order either. You just want to make sure that your next color looks good next to your next color. Let's do green, sure. And we're just really rough making our tie-dye shape. So you can do this design or this technique for all different kinds of designs. It doesn't have to be tie-dye, but anytime you wanna blend or smear colors together, this is an awesome technique to use. So, Let's do another one up here. And the other one that's in the freezer ready for us, I did a little bit differently. I did like wedges instead of circles. So I can just show you guys the difference between there. So we are gonna do, and we are just gonna build on it. And you can make each layer um, or each row as big or as small as you want. And I'm not worried about making it look pretty. I'm just, let me make sure you guys can see this well. I'm just making sure that I don't have huge gaps. So like I can have little gaps like this, but no big gaps. Um, let's see. Wonky, yeah. Yeah, Rebecca, I use lots of weird words. You guys, I'm sure, can attest to that. Um, especially with a three-year-old now, I feel like I'm making up words and stealing his made-up words, and it amuses me. Um, Elizabeth, how do you keep your layers from bulging out on the sides after it sits for a while or overnight? Okay, um, our, is the cake like squishing and stuff's coming out? or is the icing falling off of the sides of the cake, Elizabeth? Because there's a few different um, reasons for that. Okay, so we have some similar guys going on here. Let's do purple, I love purple. I know you guys love purple, throw me some hearts for purple. So we are just going to keep building. So I will say, I'm gonna do a couple of different things on this guy. The smaller you make your rows, the more difficult it's going to be. So if you make big, wide, chunky ones, and I'll do that on the other side to show you the difference, um, it's a lot easier. So that would be the one thing that I would keep in mind. When you're starting, I would do bigger, chunkier lines. The ones that have those bleed into each other. You know, I regret not doing rainbow colors because it's Pride Month. That would have been perfect for this design to do rainbow. All right, so we got this guy going on over here. I'm gonna flip this over to the back side real quick and I'm gonna show you guys really chunky ones so we can just see the difference. Not falling out, it just squishes out, I think. Okay, Elizabeth, so my thought is the filling squishing out is the cake um, like really heavy and settling down and pushing it out 
Is your icing super, super soft? Is your cake warm when you ice it? I know that's like a ton of stuff I just threw at you, but there's a lot of different reasons that little stuff like that can go wrong. Um, so those would be my, that's a lot of thoughts. That would be where I would start thinking. If any of that sounds like yes to you, please let me know. Otherwise, um, you can always email me and or just comment your email on here with your question and I will um, be happy to reach out to you one-on-one -on -one and help you problem solve. Okay, so let's do a nice, I'm gonna show you guys a big chunky version and then um, we're gonna do pink to purple to blue. Since our pink and our blue would mix and make purple anyway, I'm gonna embrace that. And I'm gonna do purple. So we're gonna make this, oh wait, I'm making it really big and chunky. Okay. Big and chunky. And there's so many people outside the window walking by. It's so weird to be up here. <laughs> I don't know if I should be up here, you guys. I need a big sign on the window. I'm sorry, I'm on Facebook Live right now. big and chunky so I will show you guys the difference and then the cake I have in the freezer I will show you like the final product but this will show you guys the different different ways to do techniques okay so we have big and chunky am I over enough Michelle, who gets the cake when it's done? Honestly, most of the time I bring it home to my husband and my kiddo. Um, and yeah, they destroy it since I'm usually doing weird things. Um, Diane, we just did your grandparents' tidy birthday cake Sunday. Oh, that's so cool. I didn't even see that we had a tidy cake go out last week. I'm disappointed I missed that. Um, okay, so we have little and then we have big and chunky you see the difference between the like the size of each row how they're just tighter I will show you guys why that is so much easier so I'm gonna start with my pointy spatula we also have the card and you can use whichever works better for you you can go back and forth there's no right or wrong so let me pull this over here so I can scrape off I have a pan over here that I'm gonna scrape off the excess because really what we're going to do when we're smoothing, we're going to smooth this stuff roughly, not perfectly. We're going to pop it in the freezer, and then we're going to smooth it perfectly. So what I'm going to end up doing here is going one color at a time. And just taking a little bit off, and I'm going to scrape it off on the edge of that pan. So we're just going to... Again, we're just getting the excess off we're not worried about making it perfect we're not blending so I'm only touching pink now we're gonna do the purple I want to make sure this is pretty clean you can wipe it off on your rag now we're gonna do the purple I'm gonna go up here and do the purple if you touch more than one color you want to be careful not to so like if I do this, which is totally fine, I got two colors. I just wanna make sure I don't blend into one or the other. So this is why it's much easier to have wider lines so that when I'm smoothing, oh, how do I do this at this angle? So that when I'm smoothing, I don't have to worry about blending as many colors as easily, right? I have more surface area of each color, so it makes it easier. Does that make sense? Sometimes I feel like words are not my friends. The tie-dye cake is perfect for Father's Day. I love it. We'll have to do some for our case, for our walk-ins. So getting all these little corners can be a little difficult. Okay, so this is fine. I like to make sure that like when I have the bigger holes like that, that I fill those. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I just don't want big gaps. Because we're gonna freeze this. This loud car. We're gonna freeze this 
so that it's cold and hard and the butter in the icing allows it to get hard which is why this works so we use a non crusting buttercream we use an American buttercream which is incredibly forgiving easy to work with makes gets very smooth and um, tastes delicious of course so you can look up a recipe online for an American buttercream and try it yourself too okay so roughly smooth it looks like a giant target so these guys like I said are a little bit harder because you have smaller lines so it's easier it's harder to fit this big guy on there so I can use the small end the short end of the card and I can do something like that super easy I get a bunch of colors at once you just want to follow the lines so you don't smear them too much it does make it easier to mess up But if you don't mess up, it goes a lot faster. You guys see how easy this is? Throw me some hearts if you think you can do this. I love it. I love teaching things that you guys can totally do. Like you can do this at home and feel good about it and be happy about it. And it looks intimidating and it looks impressive for everybody when they see your amazing cake, but it's really not hard. Look at that, so easy, you guys. Okay, I need a better angle. There we go. Okay, so all you wanna do is give them a nice rough smooth like this. So I'm gonna run to the freezer and grab the one that's already done so I can show you guys how to finish it off and make it look perfect and stunning and gorgeous. So I will be right back. I'm gonna run really fast. Alright guys, I have this one from the freezer. This one I made even bigger because I wanted to show you the difference. So we made nice big chunky colors. I love it. Super fun. Very different. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do this technique. So we're going to take the card and this is nice and cold and hard. You can touch it and it's hard. Terry, you can totally do this. That's it, it's so easy. And I'm just gonna smooth. We're gonna scrape away that icing, all that bumpy icing. And we're just gonna follow our lines. And make it nice and smooth, that's it. And you can see where some of these colors blend together and you get some very cool extra um, like blending of colors. But you can also smear them this way if you want more blending, right? Smear across the lines. So it just depends what you like. What I recommend doing is smoothing everything flat and then you can blend. You want to get all those bumps out of the way. And then we can blend. And here's a perfect spot. See how we have this gap here? I don't like that. So I'm going to take a little bit of pink, fill it in. Smooth it and it's perfect. That's it, super easy. So we're gonna go around and do this cake. It takes a few minutes, like I said, it's time consuming. 
but it is not difficult. Although I can't see what I'm doing, so let's try this. Let's see. Oh, my whole cake is moving. So this would be so cool in like more traditional primary colors, right? But I also feel like this could be cool in so many different colors. I'm curious what you guys think. I think this is such a fun way to like just showcase different fun colors. I, like I said, I wish I would have done rainbow for pride. I totally missed an awesome opportunity. Disappointed in myself for that. But that's okay. We'll make sure to remember that for next year. We'll make June our official tie-dye month. So we are just smoothing all these guys out. This works because this is frozen. So it's really cold and it's stiff and it's not sticky and it doesn't want to blend. It just wants to scrape over each other. So that's why it works so well. Kim, why do you make this look so easy? You're so sweet. Um, I have been decorating cakes for 10 years. Um, actually, we're going on like 12 years now. I keep forgetting that time continues. Um, yeah, I just, I think practice and pretending to be confident so that you guys keep watching works really well. <laughs> I have to say, I have missed you guys. I miss these tutorials. It's so much fun to get to talk to you guys and uh, to get to share what random fun information I have to share. All right, so we have our sides roughly done. We're gonna go back and patch that and that. So let's see, we want some pink. We're just gonna patch our holes. Got some blue up here. I love it. This looks so easy, doesn't it? It is easy. You guys can totally rock this. So on top, just smoothing. And then we're going to go back and fade. So we're going to blend, right? We're going to smooth everything and then we're going to blend it. Just like with painting or I don't know. I'm using colored pencils, maybe? It's been so fun to do more weddings. I've been doing sketches like crazy for couples getting married, and it's fun to get to be artistic. Let's see what else. I've got a little bit of blue hole here and there. Okay, let's see. Marsha, thank you for saying that. Terry misses cake tastings. Um, we have started doing cake tastings again. Super exciting. So if you are getting married and you need to set up your cake tasting, you can go right on our website and schedule your appointment. All right, let's get these little blue bits here. Okay, so we have everything smooth. We'll clean up the board a little bit. So now that we're smooth, let me sit back down and get in here with you guys. Let's blend. So you can see where I have some colors mixing. We can just exaggerate that by pulling the color through to the other colors. And that, to me, is the part that makes the tie-dye very cool. So. We can just start in the middle, we can go up, we can pull it out, we can be rough, we can be clean, it doesn't matter. But these like little details are what make cakes really pop. And when you see them in person, it makes all the difference. I hope you guys can see it. 
All I see are comments on the screen, so I never know what you guys can see. So we want to go from the inside, where, like where we make circles, and out. Michelle, what brand color gel did you say you used? Um, oh, the coloring is um, CK and Americolor are my favorites. Um, they're the most saturated. They hold their color the best. Um, so those who are involved with art, especially like painting or cake decorating, know that colors fade and colors oxidize and change and we colors darken and so like reds, we have trouble with oxidizing and so they get darker. So if I make a cake today and I ice it red, tomorrow it's gonna to be a darker shade of red. So we have to account for that. And there's some cheats that we can do by um, adding pink to it as a base and then adding red to that so there's not as much red, it doesn't change as much. Little things like that. Purples get lighter in the, in the light, they fade. So pulling this pink out into my blues. Do you guys see that? Throw me some hearts if you think it's amazing. The black was a color, yes. So I pulled too much and we have a little bit of cake showing here. So my border is going to cover that, but I don't want to leave it to chance. So I'm just going to add a little pink. And ta-da. So we can pull our purple into our green. It just really is a matter of what you guys like. Do you like that feathery look from pulling the color across? Because then you get that like soft feathery look. Um, and then, so we did all of the pinks. Let's pull some green into the purple and see how that looks. I don't think it's going to show up very much. Nope. So darker colors. It just depends on the colors. You kind of have to play with it. The darker colors, obviously, are going to show up a little bit easier on the lighter colors. The pink and the blue, they blend and make purple, which is perfect. This would be super cute for like a cotton candy cake where you just have these kind of colors. and then we'll tidy it up. So what do you think? These colors aren't as normal traditional tie-dye, but I thought it would be super fun to show you guys a different version. And we just have these fun blended colors. So we're just cleaning up the edges here so we can stick our border on it. like to make it neat and clean, clean off our edge, clean off our board. Let's do pink border? Let's do a blue border. I have a lot of blue in this, so I feel like the blue. When I do borders, I like it to make it disappear, make it not a focal point. So I will often do a color that I have a lot of instead of a color that I have very little or none of. Terry says, what if I wanted to add color at this point? Too late. Um, you could always take a pointy when it's cold, scrape out a crack. Let's just do it. You can scrape that out. We can add another color. So we can always do stuff like that. Or um, you can stick the cake in the freezer so it's hard and then actually hand paint other rows of color on there. But generally, I would say what you really want to do 
is make sure you have all of your mise en place, make sure you have all of your colors planned out, and then you can add them all together um, at the same time. So you can get equal proportions of the colors if that is what you're going for. Sometimes you may want just a tiny bit of one color and a lot of another color. It just depends what style you guys want to do. What other questions do you guys have for me? This is my favorite part, getting to answer your guys' questions. So we're just putting a quick border on here. And then you could do a really cool like white chocolate drip and throw some candy and macaroons on here. You could put flowers on top. You could throw glitter all over it. You could do nothing more at all. It really is whatever you guys love, which is what makes cake decorating so fun. This form of art is just playing and making things that you love. So, do you guys have any other questions for me before I get off of here? Um, I have a ton of emails and I'm getting to you, I promise. Um, I will get through most of those tonight and then the rest tomorrow. Uh, it has been amazing and crazy and wild. We had so many weddings um, are coming up and brides are reaching out at the last minute because now all of a sudden they can have their wedding and they weren't sure, so they were waiting. Um, so we are working as hard as we can to make sure that everyone gets taken care of. Awesome questions, I love it. Elizabeth, do you store your cakes in the refrigerator overnight? What's best? Um, I like to keep our cakes in the refrigerator um, until the day you wanna serve them. So here at the shop, we always keep them refrigerated. And then when you take them home, we recommend um, that you leave them out so they get to room temperature. They taste better at room temperature, but you want them to travel cold. Um, they're more stable in the car if you hit bumps or turns, um, and that way you don't have to worry about them. Um, air bubbles, it is summertime, so we should talk briefly about summertime and cakes. Summertime is the enemy of cake, um, especially if you use butter in your icing. So um, I'm actually, hopefully gonna do a video here shortly in going into more detail, but um, humidity and heat are really bad for cakes. So think about where your cake is going. If it's gonna be outside, you wanna have it out there as little time as possible. You want it in the shade, you want it with ventilation. Um, some things we cannot control at all. Air bubbles, condensation, they're going to happen if it is in a humid, hot area. So um, keep that in mind. Make sure to educate your clients if you have clients and then um, just know what you can do to prevent them as much as possible and make sure that you are planning for your delivery times and things like that. I'm planning on doing a video for them. Is that a tree you still? Yes. So I'll show you guys some of my stands. So we have these, let me flip this around. How could I do that? Okay, so we are going through a stand inventory. So we have these gorgeous pedestals. Um, I have this really cool minty green. We have stumps and all kinds of pedestal stands up here. So we rent out our stands to our clients um, if they would like to use one. And then we have some more over there. And there's our van out in the parking lot. And I can't believe I'm finishing a live and it's still daylight outside, you guys. This is so crazy. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining me. I will be back next week on Tuesday. We're going to talk about icing and stacking tiered cakes. So um, go to our Facebook page, share this, share with your friends, tag them. Um, let's get a big crowd and we will teach people how to make sure that gravity does not ruin your cake. Um, thank you so much. This is Megan with Classic Cakes and I really appreciate you guys joining me for Tutorial Tuesdays.